Schisms among the Jews are cultural as well as religious. They have happened as a product of historical accident, geography, and theology. Topic: <laughs> First Temple Era. The biblical narrative describes the split by the kingdom of Israel from the kingdom of Judah. It points to Solomon's unfaithfulness to the divine covenant as the reason for the schism. When Rehoboam, Solomon's son, became king, the people requested tax reform. Rehoboam refused. This caused the break. At first, Rehoboam considered a military solution but the prophet Shemaiah told him not fight because God had caused the schism. Jeroboam, the leader of the tax revolt, became the leader of the kingdom of Israel. After the destruction and exile of the kingdom of Israel by Assyria, non-Yahwistic practices continued. The narratives of Jeremiah and others interpreted this as the cause of the failure, destruction, and exile of the kingdom of Judah by Babylonia. Nebuchadnezzar had additional reasons for taking over Judah and turning its inhabitants into exiles, including challenging its great rival Egypt. Samaritans The Samaritans are an ethnoreligious group of the Levant originating from the Israelites or Hebrews of the ancient Near East. Ancestrally, Samaritans claim descent from the tribe of Ephraim and tribe of Manasseh two sons of Joseph as well as from the Levites, who have links to ancient Samaria from the period of their entry into Canaan, while some Orthodox Jews suggest that it was from the beginning of the Babylonian captivity up to the Samaritan polity under the rule of Baba Rabbah. According to Samaritan tradition, the split between them and the Judean led southern Israelites began during the biblical time of the priest Eli when the southern Israelites split off from the central Israelite tradition. As they perceive it, they consider themselves to be B'nai Yisrael, children of Israel, a term used universally by Jewish denominations for the Jewish people as a whole, but do not call themselves Yehudim. The word Yehudim comes from the Hebrew word Yehudi, which means from the tribe of Judah. Second Temple period Conflicts between Pharisees and Sadducees took place in the context of much broader and long-standing social and religious conflicts among Jews, made worse by the Roman conquest. Another conflict was cultural, between those who favored Hellenization the Sadducees and those who resisted it the Pharisees. A third was juridico-religious, between those who emphasized the importance of the Second Temple with its rites and services, and those who emphasized the importance of other Mosaic laws. A fourth point of conflict, specifically religious, involved different interpretations of the Torah and how to apply it to current Jewish life, with Sadducees recognizing only the written Torah with Greek philosophy and rejecting doctrines such as the Oral Torah, the Prophets, the Writings, and the Resurrection of the Dead. According to Josephus, the Sadducees differed from the Pharisees on a number of doctrinal grounds, notably rejecting ideas of life after death. They appear to have dominated the aristocracy and the temple, but their influence over the wider Jewish population was limited. The Essenes preached a reclusive way of life. The Zealots advocated armed rebellion against any foreign power such as Rome. All were at violent loggerheads with each other, leading to the confusion and disunity that ended with the destruction of the Second Temple and the sacking of Jerusalem by Rome. Topic: <laughs> Split of early Christianity and Judaism. The first Christians whom historians refer to as Jewish Christians were the original Jewish followers of Jesus, a Galilean preacher and, according to early Christian belief, the resurrected Messiah. After his crucifixion by the Romans, his followers broke over whether they should continue to observe Jewish law, such as at the Council of Jerusalem. Those who argued that the law was abrogated either partially or fully, either by Jesus or Paul or by the Roman destruction of the temple broke to form Christianity, the eventual repudiation of Moses's law by Jesus' disciples and their belief in his deity, along with the development of the New Testament, ensured that Christianity and Judaism would become different and often conflicting religions. The New Testament depicts the Sadducees and Pharisees as Jesus' opponents see woes of the Pharisees, whereas the Jewish perspective has the Pharisees as the justified predecessors of the rabbis who upheld the Torah including the Oral Law, which Christians refer to as the Mosaic Law or Pentateuch or Old Covenant, in contrast to the New Covenant. Karaiti Judaism 
Karaite Judaism is a Jewish denomination characterized by reliance on the Tanakh as the sole source of binding Jewish law. Karaites rejected the rabbinic tenet that an oral Torah oral law was transmitted to Moses at Mount Sinai along with the written scriptures. Accordingly, they rejected the central works of rabbinic Judaism which claimed to expound and interpret this written law, including the Midrash and the Talmud, as authoritative on questions of Jewish law. Karaites had a wide following between the 9th and 12th centuries they claim that at one time they numbered perhaps 10% of Jewry, but over the centuries their numbers have dwindled drastically. Today they are a small group, living mostly in Israel. Estimates of the number of Israeli Karaites range from as low as 10,000 to as high as 50,000. There is a divergence of views about the historical origins of Karaite Judaism. Most scholars and some Karaites maintain that it was founded at least in part by Anan ben David, whereas other Karaites believe that they are not the historical disciples of Anan ben David at all, and point out that many of their later sages, such as Yaakov al Kirkasani, argued that most of Anan's teachings were derived from rabbinite lore. The State of Israel, along with its chief rabbinate, ruled that Karaites are Jews, and while critical differences between Orthodox Judaism and Karaite Judaism exist, American Orthodox rabbis ruled that Karaism is much closer to Orthodoxy than the conservative and reform movements, which may ease issues of formal conversion. <laughs> Sabbatians and Frankists In 1648 Shabtai Tzvi declared himself to be the long-awaited Jewish Messiah whilst living in the Ottoman Empire. Vast numbers of Jews, known as Sabbatians, believed him, but when under pain of a death sentence in front of the Turkish Sultan Mehmed IV he became an apostate from Judaism by becoming a Muslim, his movement crumbled. Nevertheless, for centuries, small groups of Jews believed in him, and the rabbis were always on guard against any manifestations of this schism, always suspicious of hidden. Shebsalach, Yiddish for little Sebastians, a play on the word for young dumb sheep. Indeed, when the movement of Hasidism began attracting many followers, the rabbis were once again suspicious that this was Sebastianism in different garb. It would take many centuries to sort out these complex divisions and schisms and see where they were headed. After his mysterious death somewhere in the area of Turkish Albania, groups of Jews continued to be clandestine followers of Shabtai Tzvi even though they had outwardly converted to Islam, these Jews being known as the Donma. Jewish converts to Islam were, at times, therefore regarded with great suspicion by their fellow Muslims. A few decades after Shabtai's death, a man by the name of Jacob Frank claiming mystical powers preached that he was Shabtai Svi's successor. He attracted a following, preached against the Talmud, advocated a form of licentious worship, and was condemned by the rabbis at the time. When confronted by the Polish authorities, he converted to Catholicism in 1759 in the presence of King Augustus III of Poland, together with groups of his Jewish followers, known as Frankists. To the alarm of his opponents, he was received by reigning European monarchs who were anxious to see their Jewish subjects abandon Judaism and apostatize. The Frankists eventually joined the Polish nobility and gentry. <laughs> Hasidim and Mitnagdim The arrival of Israel ben Eliezer (1698–1760), known as the Baal Shem Tov, master of the good name, on the scene of Jewish history in Eastern Europe, would herald the commencement of a sea change in what is known today as Haredi Judaism. Even though he did not write books, he succeeded in gaining powerful disciples to his teachings that were based on the earlier expositions of Rabbi Isaac Luria who had based much of his Kabbalistic teachings on the Zohar. The Baal Shem Tov came at a time when the Jewish masses of Eastern Europe were reeling in bewilderment and disappointment engendered by the two notorious Jewish false messiahs Sabbatai Zevi and Jacob Frank in particular. The Baal Shem Tov witnessed Frank's public apostasy in Hebrew to Christianity, which compounded Zevi's earlier apostasy to Islam. 
The Baal Shem Tov was thus determined to encourage his influential disciples Talmidim to launch a spiritual revolution in Jewish life in order to reinvigorate the Jewish masses' connections with Torah Judaism and to vigorously motivate them to bind themselves to the joyous observance of the commandments, worship, Torah study, and sincere belief in God, so that the lures of Christianity and Islam, and the appeal of the rising secular enlightenment, to the Jewish masses would be weakened and halted. To a large degree Israel succeeded in Eastern Europe. Already during his lifetime, and gaining momentum following his death, the Baal Shem Tov's disciples spread out to teach his mystical creeds all over Eastern Europe. Thus was born Hasidic Judaism Hasidism. Some of the main movements were in, Russia which saw the rise of the Chabad Lubavitch movement, Poland which had the Gurur Hasidim, Galicia had Bubov, Hungary had Satmar Hasidim, and Ukraine had the Breslovers, and many others that grew rapidly gaining literally millions of adherents, until it became the dominant brand of Judaism in Eastern Europe in the century following the Baal Shem Tov's death. The Jewish masses flocked to this new inspired brand of mystical Judaism, and retained their connections to their Jewish heritage and way of life. Only when this new religious movement reached Lithuania did it meet its first stiff resistance at the hands of the Lithuanian Jews also known as Litviks. It was Rabbi Elijah ben Shlomo Zalman known as the Vilna Gaon of Vilna, and those who followed his classic stringent Talmudic and Halakhic scholasticism, who put up the fiercest resistance to the Hasidim righteous ones. They were called mitnagdim, meaning those who are opposed to the Hasidim. The Vilna Gaon, who was himself steeped in both Talmudic and Kabbalistic wisdom, analyzed the theological underpinnings of this new Hasidism, and in his view, concluded that it was deeply flawed since it had elements of what may be roughly termed as panentheism and perhaps even outright pantheism, dangerous aspirations for bringing the Jewish Messiah that could easily be twisted in unpredictable directions for Jewry as had previously happened with the Zevi and Frank religious revival fiascos, and an array of complex rejections of their religious ideology. The Vilna Gawans's views were later formulated by his chief disciple Rabbi Chaim Volozhin in his work Nefesh Hachim. The new Hasidic leaders countered with their own religious counter-arguments, some of which can be found in the Tanya of Chabad Lubavitch. Much of the debate remains obscure. However, regardless of the unpopularity of the move, the Vilna Gaon and the scholars of the Beth Din Jewish religious court of Vilna went so far as to place at least one severe cherim upon the Hasidim, officially excommunicating them from Judaism, which they in turn copied and did likewise to the Mitnagdim. The Vilna Gaon's strongest opposition was to the founder of Chabad Lubavitch, Rabbi Schnorr Zalman of Liadi Physical fights broke out in Vilna with each side trying to gain the favor of the Russian authorities and declaring the other side to be beyond the pale of Judaism. The bitterness and animosity between the two camps ran deep, and basically whoever joined one wing, did not attend or pray in the same synagogues as the other wing, nor have the same Torah teachers, and they would generally not marry into each other's families, which is still more or less the rule today where there is a high degree of internal communal structure. Little of the split between Hasidim and Mitnagdim remains within the modern Haredi world. When confronted by mutual threats, such as from the secular Jews of the Haskalah, or by the onslaught of communism and the Holocaust, or faced by secular Zionists, Hasidim and Mitnagdim do work together. When the outside world does not threaten them, their battle of ideas resumes as an intellectual debate. Each group has its own unique method of yeshiva study and communal life, no matter where they establish themselves. They tend to live in different neighborhoods that are still within commuting distance, although even these differences are quickly disappearing. In modern day Israel Hasidim support the Agudat Israel Party in the Knesset Israel's parliament and the non-Hasidic Mitnagdim support the Degel Hadera Party, led by Rabbi Aharon Yehuda Lieb Steinman in Bnei Brak. Agudat Israel and Degel Torah have formed a political alliance. There is also another large community that follows the rabbinical teachings of the Edda Charities. These include the Satmar Hasidim and the Purushim communities which do not support any groups that participate in the Israeli government or state activities, including elections. <laughs> Orthodox versus Reform and Conservative, East versus West 
From the time of the French Revolution of 1789, and the growth of liberalism, added to the political and personal freedoms granted by Napoleon to the Jews of Europe, many Jews chose to abandon the foreboding and isolating ghettos and enter into general society. This influenced the internal conflicts about religion, culture, and politics of the Jews to this day. Some Jews in Western Europe, and many Jews in America, joined the religiously liberal New Reform Judaism movement, which drew inspiration from the writings of modernist thinkers like Moses Mendelssohn. They coined the name, Orthodox, to describe those who opposed the Reform. They were criticized by the Orthodox Judaism rabbis, such as Samson Raphael Hirsch in Germany, and condemned, particularly by those known today as followers of Haredi Judaism, based mainly in Eastern Europe. Later on, in 1880s America, conservative Judaism split from the Reform movement. Thus a cultural schism was also created between the more westernized English, German and French-speaking Western European Jews and their more religiously observant Yiddish-speaking Eastern European brethren whom they denigratingly labeled Ost Yidden. Eastern Jews. These schisms and the debates surrounding them continue with much ferocity in all Jewish communities today as the Reform and Orthodox movements continue to confront each other over a wide range of religious, social, political, and ethnic issues. Today, the largest Jewish communities are in Israel and in the United States, and the geographical separation has resulted in cultural differences, such as a tendency to identify as Hiloni and Haredi in Israel, as opposed to, say, Reform and Orthodox in the United States. See also Culture of Israel Jewish heretics Jewish science Jews in apostasy Religion in Israel Secular Jewish culture Split of early Christianity and Judaism References External links History of Jewish denominations What's the difference between Orthodox, Conservative and Reform? Jewish Identity Numbers chapters 16-18, The Schism of Korah excerpt from the Tanakh, The Holy Scriptures, Philadelphia, Jerusalem, Jewish Publication Society 1985.